Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our regular public hearing and, and commission meeting this evening, I have a very special proclamation that I'm going to make, and I want to make sure I can get it done before the weather gets any worse. So at this time, if the family and Miss um, Ann Brody Mayhew would come forward, I would like to make this very special proclamation. And um, I think you're all going to be uh, quite um, amazed at this. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I'd like to read the proclamation first. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Miss Ann Brody Mayhew, and her daughter and granddaughter are with her today as well. And the proclamation reads, whereas longevity of life is a blessing for an individual and for a community which benefits from the knowledge, creativity, and experiences this individual brings to all. And whereas the city of Lynn Haven recognizes with respect and admiration the contribution of senior citizens to our community, and whereas during a long and productive lifetime, Anne Brody Mayhew has demonstrated in countless ways her dedication to the welfare of others and has earned the respect and affection of people from all walks of life and all ages. And whereas she has lived during the most eventful century of this world's history and in her quiet way has been a force for good and a stabilizing influence on those around her during these turbulent years. And whereas Miss Mayhew was born and raised in Chicago, August 14, 1918, and moved to Lynn Haven in 2007 to be closer to her family. And whereas Miss Mayhew is a woman who believes the key to a long, happy life is to live a clean life. And whereas Ms. Mayhew also believes that no one is perfect and every person has something to give and that people should just try to get along with each other. And whereas Ms. Mayhew comes from a family of nine siblings and is proud to be part of a family where longevity of life is part of her family's history. And whereas the United States has the greatest number of centenarians in the world and today Ms. Mayhew should be honored for this 100 years on this earth. And now, therefore, by virtue of the authority invested in me as mayor of the city of Lynn Haven, on behalf of the city commission and all citizens of Lynn Haven, I do hereby proclaim from this day forward Miss Mayhew's birthday, August 14th, 2018, as Ann Brody Mayhew Day, honoring Miss Mayhew for her long life and prosperity and wishing her many more years to come. In witness whereof I do hereby set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Lynn Haven to be affixed on this day in September 2018. Um, would you please stand and give a round of applause as I bring the key of the city to Miss Mayhew. Because this is a budget hearing, we have to wait until 5.01 to begin, so give us one more minute. <laughs> start with the invocation. Okay, at this time I would like to call to order the regular city commission meeting of the city of Lynn Haven, um, and it is now called to order. If you would please stand for the invocation by Commissioner Friend. Thank you, Mayor. Let's pray. Father, we just thank and we praise you, God, for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us here in Lynn Haven in America, God. And as we remembered yesterday, Lord, 9-11 and the tragedy there, God, we just want to take this minute to, to thank all those families, Lord, that had to remember that. And God, as, as we take that time, Lord, let us also be thankful for our first responders and the work that they do every day. We've, 
We pray, God, a special hedge of protection around them, Father, as they go about and serve this city. Lord, we just thank and we praise you, God, for the men and women that sacrifice their lives in America to give us the freedoms that we have in order to come here tonight and do the business of this city. The Lord give us wisdom, guidance, and direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to open the first public hearing. The time is 5.02 Central Time. Item A is the tentative millage rate for the 2018 tax roll. Um, the resolution is 2018-09-718, which is the tentative millage rate. Um, Mr. White, could you please read that resolution for us? Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 2018-09-718. A resolution of the City of Linhaven of Bay County, Florida, adopting the tentative levying of ad valorem taxes for Bay County for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019, providing for an effective date. I also would like to add, Mayor, that this would be a operating millage rate of 3.9 mills, which is greater than the rollback rate of 3.8164 mills of 2.19%. That is from the property values increasing within the city limits. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2018-09718? So, so moved. moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion from the board? At this time, I'd like to open for discussion or questions from the public. If you have a question or you'd like to make a comment in this public hearing, please approach the podium. There appears to be no comments um, at this time. Um, Mr. White, would you please call the roll for um, approval? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the millage rate um, is the tentative millage rate is approved. For, for the record, Mr. White, could you summarize the items that would um, account for the increase above the rollback rate? It's just a statutory formality. Yes, the items include uh, a lot, several capital items as well as items that are uh, associated with the enterprise funds. Yeah, I, I would suggest if anyone, based on that explanation, has comments from the audience, we'd entertain those, but otherwise, that's acceptable. Based on the statutory comments from the city manager, which were necessary by Florida statute, is there anyone who has a comment about those? There appear to be none. Why don't we do that? That'll, that'll be safer. Okay, at this, do we need to amend the motion or just have a separate motion? Just ratify the prior, prior motion on the at, resolution. At this time, um, we'll take another vote to ratify the prior motion. So, Mr. White, if you would call the roll again. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So, the millage rate, then the tentative one, has been approved. Item B is the tentative general fund and enterprise fund budget for fiscal year 2018 to 2019. Is there a motion? Well, first of all, Mr. White, would you please read resolution 2018-09-719, the tentative general fund budget and approving the enterprise fund budgets for fiscal year 2018-2019. Resolution number 2018-09-719, a resolution of the city of Lynn Haven of Bay County, Florida, adopting the tentative budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2018 and ending September 3rd, 2019, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Are there ratification elements? I, I, I have nothing on this one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, are there questions or comments from the board? Are there questions or comments from the public? Yes, Mr. Walker. Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue, for clarification and uh, asking a question. Is the stormwater fund part of the enterprise funds? Yes. Thank you. Are there other questions? Mrs. Walker? Do 
Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. On page, on page, this I forgot to ask this earlier, on page 18 and page 19, there are notes that we're purchasing some. Uh, one books. moment, please. Um, Ian, could you turn up the public microphone? I'm having difficulty hearing. Um, Thank I need to turn it Is up. that better? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Page 18 and 19. Um, uh, capital assets budgeted. There are a number of police cars called interceptor patrol cars. There's a crew cab truck. There is a, um, a reader truck, a mini excavator trailer truck. Are those purchased locally in Bay County? They are on the state contract, so whoever has the state contract typically will we will win the bid. The state already contracts out for the state. They go out and get submit bids everywhere, and we piggyback off a lot of the state contracts to purchase those items. Okay, it's it's okay, but but we get the best price. Hope. Yes, ma'am. The state. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Are there other questions or comments from um, the audience on item B? Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2018-09719? So moved. Is second. there a second? Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Cram. Yes. Commissioner Russell. Yes. Tinder. Yes. Commissioner Barnes. Aye. Mayor Anderson. Yes. And so this public hearing is closed at 5.08 Central Time with the motion approved. The second public hearing will begin at 5.08 Central Time. It is concerning um, the Tentative Community Redevelopment Agency budget, the CRA budget, for fiscal year 2018-2019. And if you would, Mr. White, please read for us Resolution 2018-09-720, the Tentative CRA budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. Thank you. Resolution number 2018-09-720, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven of Bay County, Florida, adopting the Community Redevelopment Agency tentative budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Are there ratification options? No, there are none. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 2018-09-720? So move. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any comments from the board or questions? Any comments from the public or questions from the public at this time? There appear to be none. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the motion to adopt the resolution is approved and this public hearing will end at 5.09 Central Time. Thank you. I believe those were the two quickest public okay. hearings I've ever administrated. <laughs> Moving on to item number five, the mayor's report. Um, I've already done the first proclamation. I do apologize if you didn't make it in. I did it the first one because of our resident being 100 years old and we're trying to get her back over to um, her residence before the rain started. So hopefully they made it. Um, the next proclamation that I have is from the Bay County um, DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution, and they have a proclamation which they have asked um, all of the city leaders to uh, make. And I'll also be making this proclamation at their luncheon next week um, with the other uh, government officials who will be there. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law, and whereas September 17, 2018, marks the 231st anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to, afford, to accord official recogni recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary, and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it, and whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week, 
Now, therefore, I, Margot Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution held in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the state to be affixed this 12th day of September of the year of our Lord, 2018. And then it's signed. Is there a representative of DAR here today to accept the proclamation? If not, I'll be bringing it to the luncheon. Okay. And then I have one other proclamation that I've been asked um, to make today, and this is uh, the Diaper Need Awareness Week. And uh, the proclamation is, whereas diaper need the condition of not having a sufficient supply of clean diapers to ensure that infants and toddlers are clean, healthy, and dry can adversely affect the health and welfare of infants, toddlers, and their families. And whereas national surveys report that one in three mothers experiencing diaper need at some time while their children are less than three years of age, and 48% of families delay changing a diaper to extend their supply. And whereas the average infant or toddler requires an average of at least 50 diaper changes per week over three years, and whereas there are no government assistance programs for the purchase or provision of diapers, and a monthly supply of diapers can cost as much as 6% of a full-time minimum wage worker's salary, therefore obtaining a sufficient supply of diapers can cause economic hardship to families. And whereas a supply of diapers is generally an eligibility requirement for infant and toddlers to participate in child care programs and quality early education programs, and whereas the people of Lynn Haven recognize that addressing diaper need can lead to economic opportunity for the state's low-income families and can lead to improved health for families and their communities, and whereas Lynn Haven is proud to be home to various community organizations that recognize the importance of diapers in pro helping provide economic stability for families and distribute diapers to poor families through various channels. Now, therefore, I, Margo Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim the week of September 24th through October the 3rd, 2018, as Diaper Need Awareness Week in the City of Lynn Haven and encourage the citizens of Lynn Haven to donate generously to diaper banks, diaper drives, and those organizations that distribute diapers to families in need to help alleviate diaper need in Lynn Haven and the environs. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, to be affixed this 12th day of September of the year of our Lord, 2018. Very important um, uh, document. I had a, a very busy two weeks. Most of it has been spent uh, visiting with different residents about various flooding needs they're having. As you can see by looking out the window, it has become almost biblical in Lynn Haven with the rain that we're having. And so um, that's that's been a great deal of my time, as I sure it has been with, with a lot of the city. And I want to thank the staff and the city manager for quickly answering those calls and, and trying to address those needs as quickly as possible. Also had the great honor yesterday of participating in the 9-11 Patriots Day ceremony. I want to um, congratulate all the city employees who worked so hard to make that a wonderful day um, to uh, elevate and lift up our first responders and also to rem remember all those who were lost on that very tragic day. Um, at this time, um, I also have um, item number D, which is presentation by the Girl Scouts Council of the Florida Panhandle. So if I have representatives that are here from the Girl Scouts of the Florida Panhandle, if you'd please come forward. Mayor, we would like, um, in honor of you, as um, a to present you with this great honor, um, present you with this plaque and award for um, community impact from the Girl Scouts, the visionary honor. So, if you will please step up and accept this. We um, just a sh few short weeks ago. The Girl Scouts ha hosted the Woman of Distinction Awards Gala, and the mayor was recognized as a nominee 
unfortunately she was not able to make the, the dinner gala and she was recognized to receive the Visionary Award that evening and so we wanted to come and present this officially to you. Thank you. So. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. And Philomena. You just wanted to get in the picture. Ladies, that is such an honor. Thank you so very much. Um, I had been nominated for the award, and I, I told them I was going to be out of town. If you remember, my husband had heart surgery last year, and we had postponed a vacation, and it was scheduled during that time. But I want to tell you that I was a Girl Scout from the time I was a brownie in first grade all the way through eighth grade as a cadet. My mom, who's here tonight, was a brownie scout leader, and she was very instrumental in my being a part of that. So um, I just want to tell everyone, Girl Scouting makes strong girls. And all of you ladies who work so hard to lift girls up and, and to volunteer your time and to be a part of that organization, I just commend you. And um, I hope you have the best um, year ever with cookie sales. Everybody buy those cookies. And, and I uh, thank you again for all that you do to lift girls up in this community. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Um, at this time, we'll move on to the commissioner's reports, and I'll start with Commissioner Friend. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, just a couple of things. I did attend the 9-11. Just want to say thank you to everyone that, that put that on. It was a great event. Mayor did a great job presenting for the on behalf of the city, and, and also just want to use, again, the opportunity to say thank you to our first responders for what they do every day. Uh, meet with some uh, folks from Tallahassee on Friday for Rails to Trails. Um, so we've got that coming up on Friday. And then also Thursday, I mentioned at the last meeting about the trolley. Um, you're starting to maybe see some advertising on the trolleys that are running around town. Well, Thursday, there's actually a kickoff ceremony for that um, that'll be at the government center. So if you're interested in advertising on the trolley or just interested in about that program at all, it's gonna be going on on Thursday. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Barnes? Um, yes, as many of you know, I am the assistant principal at Arnold High School. So yesterday, I attended a 9-11 ceremony there. Um, I, I must commend the students in Bay County because that ceremony was student-led. And uh, it was a very good ceremony. And I was really, really proud of those students uh, that participated in that. Also received some emails uh, about some complaints. I forwarded those to Mr. White, and um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Tender? Uh, yes, Mayor. I would like to enter into our minutes the letter that I received from the Bay County Council on Aging on Monday, um, for the record. It says, Dear Commissioner Tender, and by the way, we all received this letter, not just me. <laughs> um, Dear Commissioner Tender, the Bay County Council on Aging has elected not to renew the contract to operate the Lynn Haven Senior Center. We are pleased that you have explored the options of operating the center internally and you are assuring the seniors of better quality meals and services at no cost to the seniors. The senior, uh, the senior citizens of Lynn Haven are very excited that they have been promised lunches provided by local restaurants, along with additional activities and crafts, including woodworking and sewing. They are also pleased that many of the restrictions and registration requirements that now apply due to grant contracts that help to fund our services will no longer be required under the city's management. 
We cannot afford to provide the restaurant meals and are not able to provide services without assuring the documentation requirements of the grants. Although the city has provided a portion of the funding to operate the center, Older Americans Act and other grants have also provided funding for meals and services. We are very proud that we were selected to establish the Lynn Haven Senior Center and have been very pleased with the growth and service we have provided for the past 12 years. We wish you well in continuing to provide services for the elders who attend the center and depend on you for their daily food, activities, and health. <clears throat> I would like to recommend Marjorie Moore, PhD, of the University of Florida Bay County Extension Food Safety and Quality Program to certify your staff who will be transporting and serving food. She has been most helpful to us in providing the training to our staff and certification that is required by the Florida Department of Health to provide uh, food service to the public. The Senior Center building was initially renovated and provided to be used for our program. However, the contents were purchased by our agency and with the exception of some donations from the individual commissioners are listed um, by the commission are listed in our inventory and we are accountable for them. We will remove those items at the end of September unless you would like to discuss with us any alternative solution. It has truly been our pleasure serving the elder citizens of Lynn Haven and we wish you well in your commitment to continue that service. Uh, sincerely, Elizabeth Collette. And Thank that, you. that is all I really have. I do want to say that uh, last week I went over to the Senior Center when everything was kind of up in the air. I uh, purchased one of the frozen meals that is served on Monday, Wednesday, or no, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I took it back to the restaurant because I had to be there at noon. I think you all were there, but I didn't see you. Took it back, I put it in the microwave as instructed. I have to say that when, you, when it comes to seniors, and anybody in the food industry knows this, you leave it to them to season everything. So needless to say, um, uh, I had a chicken breast, mashed potatoes and gravy, spinach with mushrooms. I was totally full when the meal was over. Now, yes, I heavily, heavily seasoned everything, but um, I, was, I was actually kind of impressed for a dollar, you know, I mean. <laughs> I should buy 14 a week and I could lose weight and stay healthy. But anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Russell, if you don't mind, I wanted to just backtrack for a second and then I'll come back to you. I didn't ask if there was a representative present to accept the diaper proclamation, the diaper, diaper awareness proclamation. Was there anyone here to receive that proclamation? Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure I hadn't overlooked anyone. Commissioner Russell. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I've just got a couple of things. Uh, we, uh, the city manager and myself, had a quasi town hall meeting last Tuesday at the senior center, and I want to thank the seniors that are here tonight that came to that meeting. Um, it was very informative, and I appreciate you supplying the information. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 while I'm, I'm not going to knock the council on aging, I think that uh, this, uh, them deciding not to renew the contract is, is going to be a good thing for the seniors of Lynn Haven. Um, of course, it's going to put more work on the city manager and the staff, but, uh, but in the end, I think you're going to get a better product, and I think you're going to be very happy with, with the service. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, still dealing with stormwater issues, a gentleman on Rhode Island is, has uh, become my best friend. Um, we talk almost daily about his issues, and, and the city manager and me are still trying to work that one out. Um, and uh, other than that, the uh, budget workshop went well today, um, and I kind of beat it down again, and I'm going to say it again. Stormwater, we're going to have to do something with this. I mean, we're transferring a little over $900,000 into stormwater this year um, from one enterprise fund to another, so that's going to have to be addressed. We're, we're going to have to do something to, to, to equal out those funds. And uh, again, I keep saying it, fire trucks. We, we need fire trucks, and that money's going to have to come somewhere. But, uh, that's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Russell. Um, at this time, uh, the city manager's report is the next item on the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. 
this time I'd like to ask Kathy Gaynor and her supervisor, uh, Mr. Greg, to come up front. Ms. Kathy is, uh, works in our water and wastewater and, and of course, Mark as well. Uh, and as an administrative assistant, she does a fabulous job. So typically when you have a water question, this is the lady that usually answers that phone and tries to answer your questions promptly. But with that, Greg, if you would, tell a little bit about with the city since 1996. Um, she was our safety officer for the utility department for many years. She's uh, been our Christmas party organizer for many years. Um, uh, when the girls at City Hall call and I answer the phone, they first ask, where's Kathy? So um, she is a, a huge asset to our department in the city and we'd like to thank her for her service. Also, at this time, we usually do quarterly. We try our best to recognize a supervisor of the quarter. And if I could, could I ask Miss Vicki Gaynor to come up as a soup, the manager and Miss Alice Fritz, which operates our library. I don't know if you have been to our library. We offer a lot of programs. Uh, Miss Alice knows more. You she offers see. a lot of programs. She does tremendous work with a very, very small staff. So I really appreciate her commitment to the city, and especially the children, a lot of good programs. I'll tell you a funny story. When I first got here, she asked me to judge a coloring contest. <laughs> My staff knows I'm colorblind. <laughs> so I was just trying to look and see who kept everything in line. It's pretty good. So, but uh, Ms. Alice, I really appreciate you. You can see how surprised she is. I told her she had, had to come over and talk about the budget, so she had no idea. Um, but this is the kind of person that Alice is. She is our hidden jewel. She makes sure that the library want, runs with, you know, with no hesitation at all. Her employees adore her. And one of the great things about Alice is that when she was out and her father died, her staff was in charge and never once did I hear staff say, well, I don't know, Alice does that. I don't know how to do that. They were so on top of things and I was so proud to work with them. She is so committed to our library to make sure that citizens and students get what they need and always come to me saying, hey, I have this really great idea. What do you think about this? And is always very excited about what she wants to do and help to see our library grow. I am so honored just to be a part of her uh, world and uh, for her to just uh, lead the library staff. She's a great supervisor, so thank you. Thank you, Miss Alice. Um, next, we have business of the quarter. I'm going to ask Ben Jenke to come up. But uh, as you know, we, we've had a couple of business. The last business was Beef Old Brady's, uh, their commitment to the community. Uh, and the next business is going to be BP and Sons. They uh, do work as the Gulf gas station. Mr. Victor Battelle owns that gas station. And uh, if you ever notice, this one on 12th Street. Is that correct? Well, 12th, 12th Street. Uh, Always look at his gas station. He's always clean, and he's always smiling. That man really loves the city of Lynn Haven, him and his wife. I think they do a wonderful job. But with that, I'll turn it over to Ben. I think he turned it off. The city manager uh, just mentioned our business of the quarter. For the third quarter, 2018, is... Uh, VR and Sons Incorporated, also known as the Gulf uh, Gas Station here on 12th and Highway 77. Uh, like the city manager mentioned, uh, Mr. Patel really transformed this gas station. Uh, it is spotless. Um, if, if you remember this gas station from a couple of years ago, uh, it was a mess. And um, 
So he did a fantastic job and that's the reason why we would like to recognize um, this business here in Lynn Haven. I, I think Mr. Patel is not in the audience today, but I he's will- He's probably working. Him and his <laughs> wife, there's only two ever there. But so I, he's probably working. But I will make sure that he will receive this um, award. And Mayor, only thing is I'd like to add is uh, once again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my staff has worked tremendously hard on the budget. Uh, takes a lot of a lot of hours to put these things together and a lot of uh, fruitful thinking. Uh, and I want to sincerely appreciate them. And also, as as alluded to, uh, I've been to the Senior Assistance Center with you, Commissioner Friend, and uh, Commissioner Russell on different occasions. And uh, I think their voice has been heard. And uh, I look forward to working with them. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number eight is the city attorney's report. Uh, nothing except that Rob regrets not being here. He had scheduled airfare before he realized that the meeting days were changing. Well, we, appre we appreciate you being here in his stead. Thank you, Nick, very much. Um, we'll move on now to the consent agenda. Um, items 10, uh, the minutes from 8-28-2017, the regular meeting. And item number 11 is discussion and possible action regarding the residential incentive program application for 1403 Arkansas Avenue. Oops, I skipped an item. I apologize. I have to back up. I um, skipped number nine. Um, this is the public commentary. I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> so if you are here tonight and you have any uh, subject that you would like to address the commission about, this will be your time to do that. And also, um, as we proceed with the meeting, as we talk about each item, if you would prefer to wait and have your moment to speak as we talk about each item, you can do it then as well. So the public commentary is open now. It can be on any topic, whether or not it's on the agenda tonight or not. So is any, would anyone like to address the commission? Everyone's happy. That's, that's amazing. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> But I didn't skip it on purpose. So on to the consent agenda, I've already read both of those items. So is there a motion to approve the two items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions from the commission about the consent agenda items? Are there any questions or comments from the public about the consent agenda? There appear to be none. Mr. Is, we do have a motion, right? Yes. Okay. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the consent agenda stands approved. Moving on to old business. Item number 12 is the final reading of ordinance number 1061, which approves the amendment to the Unified Land Development Code, Table 2.03.02. Um, this will require action this evening. So, Mr. White, if you would please read ordinance number 1061. Ordinance number 1061, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending Table 2.03.02, Table of Permitted Land Uses of the City's Unified Land Development Code, repealing all ordinances in conflict and providing for an immediately effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or concerns from the Commission regarding this item? Any questions or concerns from the public regarding this item? There appear to be none. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the ordinance stands approved. Moving to item number 13. This is the final reading of ordinance number 1062, approving the adoption of the multimodal mobility plan fee schedule. This also will require action this evening. Mr. White, would you please read ordinance 1062? Ordinance number 1062, an ordinance of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending chapter 86 of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances, establishing a multimodal mobility fee to support the established multimodal mobility system enacted in the comprehensive plan establishing mobility system fees and discounts for development in the urban cluster and community redevelopment areas, providing for codification, repealing ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion from the board? Mm, yes, Mayor. Please go ahead. My only concern is I'm afraid this may stifle growth 
we already have fairly high impact fees and and like i've said numerous times when we've discussed this i'm i'm just nervous of these numbers okay anyone else on the board have a comment or a question um mayor if i may yes um i see that we we did eliminate the place of worship is that correct yes i do believe so yes ma'am yes we did at the last meeting no, you okay okay Okay, all right. And the only other one that, um, we say well, actually, I still say I still see it says assembly hall in place of worship on here. I thought yeah. we had agreed to leave that out. To leave it off completely. Yeah, but I, I thought that I thought we were given reason why we couldn't though. And we did come back on that as well, and yeah. we talked about I the fact remember. we talked about I think that the place of that we could look at it on a one by one. Yeah. Uh, an item by item application I think between Miss Richard and um, and uh, our city attorney I think I think we came to the conclusion that we couldn't unfortunately I, I believe you're correct on that because we had to look at them together if I recall yeah, and so we yeah. had to leave them and then we decided that if it came up that if there was a place of worship that we could look at it individually and make a commission decision at that point is yeah. that is that your recollection I think so yeah okay yeah, so I where, discussed where, yesterday with with Mr. Jackson as well he he recommended not creating an exception here um, yeah. just it creates some risks to the validity of the whole program. Okay, I think I recall. And because it's so new, yes. I mean, this is a new. We're, yeah. we're sort of Not only, on new ground, you know, for sure. Yeah. Are there any other concerns or questions from the board? Okay, um, is there a motion for approval? I already did that, I'm audience. sorry. Is there a comment or question from the audience? I apologize, Mr. Walker. Walker 1106 Michigan Avenue um, I'd like to, I'm, I'm, I'm along with mr. Russell on this one um, there is a notice I asked for how much the impact fees would be decreased decreased in the CRA area and in general and it was a dramatic decrease um, it looks like what we're doing here is uh, placating to the developer again along with the incentive programs that we've put into uh, effect for the city and the CRA. And uh, now the impact fees were set up a long time ago and everybody accepted it. Uh, Mr. Friend, Mr. Commissioner Friend also stated the fact that the builders will build no matter what you do anyway. So they will come, that's good. Um, is the impact fees being reduced dramatically with this program. Mr. Walker, if, if I may, um, the mobility plan, there are a couple of things that, that it does that I really like, even though it's a new program. Inland Haven impact fees have been frozen on businesses for over 10 years, according to our uh, policies. So therefore, the impact fees have fallen on the shoulders of the residential community. In other words, the residential uh, building, the impact fees have, have come from the residents. The way this mobility plan is set up, it, I, I definitely don't see it as placating the developers because those new developments that are being built outside the old plat of Lynn Haven are going to be paying the higher impact fees. For those who are already in Lynn Haven, residents or businesses, they are grandfathered in. This is for new businesses, new residences, and if you are building in the old part of Lynn Haven, your impact fees are going to be minimal in the hundreds, like $150 as, as compared to um, in the thousands on the outside of the old plat. And the thinking of this is it's called a mobility plan. All of the funds from this can be used for mobility within the community. And the thinking is that those who put the most um, traffic on the roads and on the mobility system are those who will be shouldering the majority of the impact fees. If you're living in the old plat of Lynn Haven, there's a lot of walking that goes on. There's bicycling, the golf carts, those things that don't impact so much. So this is a very innovative, a very new way of doing impact fees. I applaud the commission for the discussion we had and the and the uh, consensus that we reached before. And I believe this is going to be something that as people see how it works, that it's going to be a good thing for Lynn Haven. It's going to help bring more development into the old part of Lynn Haven, more new homes, more new businesses. And it's going to more fairly 
distribute the impact funds, excuse me, impact fees, so that the residents of Lynn Haven are not having to shoulder all of that while the businesses, and if you'll pardon my expression, get off scot-free. So that's how I see it. <coughs> yeah, that, that's, your discussions were very good and in-depth, uh, but as I look at it, practically from where I look at it as a citizen, watching a developer, a developer, which is a business, he comes in, buys a piece of property, Lynn Haven has decreased the amount of buildings that can be put on the old plots, put two houses where one should be, okay? He then gets the impact fees, he passes those on to the buyer, then we in the CRA and in the incentive areas give him $5,000 for doing that. He pays no taxes for the whole year, doesn't increase the tax value to us as citizens, doesn't increase any input into the city's coffers, impact fees, they all get passed on, and then we pay him for that purpose, and then he leaves. I, I listen and with great respect it. to your comments, and we've had this same conversation before, but um, I disagree with about 75% of what you just said that, you know, as to how that works, but we can have that discussion. If, if there's anything else you want to add, you're certainly free to do it, but I will agree to disagree. Okay. Uh, it, there's something wrong with this picture here. Thank you, Mr. Walker, as always. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on the mobility plan before we move forward? Okay. I did do a motion, did I not? Okay. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Russell? No. Commissioner <coughs> Tinder? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the mobility plan stands approved, and uh, I look forward to seeing, seeing it work. I think it's going to be a great thing. Item number 14 is the final reading of ordinance number 1063, amending chapter 62 of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances to establish exemptions for the occupational license tax, adopting a process to claim an occupational license tax exemption. There will be action required on this item tonight, and so if you would please read ordinance 1063, Mr. White. Ordinance number 1063, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending chapter 62 of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances to establish exemptions for the occupational license tax, adopting a process to claim an occupational license tax exemption, providing for codification, repealing ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions from the commission members or Con concerns. Thank I you. I have one Mr. here. Tinder. Um, I, I just want to make sure I understand this ordinance. Is this the, um, did we discuss this earlier that had a lot to do with the small home type business that we require uh, the regular license fee and they were asking for a smaller fee for their business? No, ma'am. This was something that was handed down by the state that we had to mandate that we had to offer an exemption. So Ms. Gaynor and the attorney come up with the form uh, for the tax fee uh, exemption. There's certain criteria they have to meet, and if they meet those, you know, like a disabled person, age 65 or older, it, it lists a bunch, honorary discharge vet, uh, veteran. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what this has to do with. Okay, thank you. It's a you. state mandate. Thank you. Are there other questions from the board or concerns? Any from the public? Yes, go ahead. Goodnick, is this on? Richard Goodkinick, 1519 Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, first, I'd like to express my disappointment in the commission. Uh, I attended the last commission meeting and was going to address this, but didn't get an opportunity because I didn't understand the rules. But I sent an email shortly after that to all the commission about my uh, input on this and I received no response at all not even an acknowledgement of an email and I think that is ill serving your constituents but first of all I've talked about this for several years yes. and while I'm pleased that you guys are taking some action and now I guess I find out that it's only because the state mandated you take action it uh, it's really nice because it does uh, kind of you know give a good touchy-feely thing about uh, helping out certain categories of people 
but it doesn't address the problem. And the problem that I have addressed over and over again is just as Commissioner Tinder expressed, that small businesses uh, are ill-served by this system. Uh, I've been told by a commissioner that the reason we have the occupational license program here is for the privilege of doing business in the city of Lynn Haven. Well, I'm sorry, I'm an American citizen and I have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I should not have to have the permission of the city government to operate my business. The second thing is, is there's lots of businesses out here that are just circumventing the system and not registering with you. These are, uh, like I've pointed out before, the way the ordinance is currently written, if my child wants to set up a lemonade stand in my front yard, they require an occupational license from the city of Lynn Haven which would be the tune of about 60 bucks, so they're not gonna make any money. But you have other, other businesses that you're probably familiar with, you know, the things that are based on the party system, you know, selling, you know, different cosmetics or household products or things of that nature. Um, they're probably not even registering with you. Now, my business did register with you because at the time, uh, in the past, I did have a contract with the state of Florida for. A, a period of time and but my business is very small my gross revenues over the past couple of years have been less than a thousand dollars yet I'm required to pay sixty dollars in occupational tax now I'm going to support this amend or this ordinance that you're uh, providing here today because I will be eligible for one of the exemptions but I do have a couple questions first of all uh, the fo the way it looks the way you're making this change is there's this form that's been created and what I would recommend that uh, it looks like you can change this form without actually changing the ordinance. So I'd ask you to look at this form later on and see if you could do something like I've suggested in the past is go on the gross sales of the business and set a criteria I've suggested the poverty level which is around $10,000 anything below that they should be exempted. And uh, you also wanted to spell check the current form you have. There's a problem with the spelling on there. And the last question I have is if this ordinance passes today, I assume it's immediately effective, and my business license expires at the end of this month, will there be some kind of an exemption or extension for us that will apply for these exemptions uh, to get them so that it applies for this coming year? Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to defer to our um, attorney consultant to answer your question about the form because it was drawn up by the attorney and Ms. Gaynor, so I'll let him reply to that. In terms of what you'd need to do later to expand this exemption, um, the ordinance as drafted is designed to be self-implementing if it's a state law exemption. Um, otherwise, if it's not a state law exemption, you would need some ordinance adopted on your own behalf to, to expand that exemption. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. And in regard to the email, I uh, honestly do not remember receiving an email from you. I know you and I have corresponded many times, but I don't recall receiving one this week or if it was recently. So I do apologize if I overlooked it. And Mayor, Mayor, if I may. Yes. Thank you. I, I, I'd like to say I, have, I didn't receive it either. And I know you and I have also corresponded. So I just, um, yes, yes, sir. So it could have, maybe it was just a glitch or something with two of us. I don't know about the rest of us, but I, I do I do try to be diligent, and I know you and I have corresponded before, so I apologize again. And hopefully we can work this out to your satisfaction. And um, we'll move on. Anyone else have a comment about this or question? Okay, at this time, Mr. White, would you call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so it does stand approved. Moving on to new business, item number 15 is the first reading of ordinance number 1064. This is amending the small scale future land use map amendment SSA-18-6 from recreation slash open space to industrial. Uh, Mr. White, if you would please read the ordinance. Ordinance number 1064, an order is providing for the adoption pursuant to chapter 163, Florida statutes of a land use change from recreation slash open space to industrial for an approximate 3.94 acres of property located south of Aberdeen Parkway 
parcel 11573-004-000 in the city of Lynn Haven, Bay County, Florida, repelling all ordinances in conflict herewith and providing an effective date. Thank you. This is a first reading which re which requires no action uh, this evening. Um, correct? Correct. Yes. However, uh, if anyone on the board has a question or would like more information, this will be the time to ask. Does anyone from the public have any questions or concerns about this ordinance? There appear to be none. So we'll move on to item number 16. Item number 16 is a first reading of ordinance number 1065 relating to licenses for an on-premises consumption of alcoholic beverages for restaurants. Um, this ordinance, um, Mr. White, if you would please read it. Ordinance number 1065, an ordinance of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending Chapter 6 of the Lynn Haven Code of Ordinances regarding alcoholic beverages, defining restaurants and bars separately, permitting licensure for an on-premise consumption of alcoholic beverages in restaurants as defined by state law, providing for repeal of ordinances in conflict, providing for codification, and providing for an imme immediately effective date. Thank you, and I would like to give an explanation. This is a first reading which requires no action. If anyone else wants to discuss it on the board, you're certainly free to do that, and we'll take public comment as well. Um, this came about because of requests from the little coffee shop on Florida Avenue. Um, if you're familiar with it, it's next door to Victoria's Last Bite across the street from Roberts Hall. They uh, currently serve coffee. They do breakfast in the morning. They do some lunch items. They do like tapas and all in the afternoon, and they had requested um, an ordinance that would permit them as long as their, I believe this is correctly stated, their food sales um, were higher than if they wanted to do a mimosa at breakfast time or offer a glass of wine with their tapas or at lunch time, that they would be able to do that in a restaurant status. So that's what this ordinance is about. So if anyone on the board has questions about the ordinance for our attorney or for the city manager or just to discuss it, this will be the time. I'll go ahead and uh, make sure. a couple of comments. Um, sure. Just so we're clear, I mean, this is an ordinance for citywide, so it's not just for the individual business that you're speaking it, of. It would be for, yeah, right. my understanding, any any restaurant right. citywide. Okay. And then do they own that building or are they, I think they're renting? The building? I think they have at least. I'm not, least I'm not sure of all okay. the, yeah. But yeah, the, the main thing that it, as an ordinance for the city is I just want to make everyone aware it, it's not, it would be citywide. So it would be for a restaurant. And, and the other part is the 500 feet from a church or school or whatever. Currently, it just says bar, and we're opening up for restaurants. Sure. And and um, also the only reason I mentioned Wild Root is because the owner is the one who came forward sure. and asking. Yeah. And, um, and I would also um, uh, mention that in looking back on the old ordinance, um, which was written a couple of years ago and signed by this board, including myself, um, we were matching the Florida statute regarding 500 feet from Florida from churches or schools. And in rereading it, there's a fine black line through the word church that I did not see before. So church is excluded. So that might be something, and, and I was a little disturbed by that. I was unhappy that I had not focused on that more. So I didn't like that at all. But anyway, anything else from the board? I just want to mention. Go ahead. Uh, and I, I just want to double check my re memory. Um, wasn't there also something about it's not as the, clo as the crow flies, the distance, it is from door to door. Correct. Without going through an alley, but going on sidewalks. Correct. And such, okay. Correct. And, and City Planner did do some measurements of different various places and, and came up with some distances, so. Okay, um, any, any comments at this time? Any more from the board? I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Any comments from the public regarding this first reading? There will be no action taken tonight. Mr. Walker. Do they require a license from ATF? Um, as far as I know, it's, it's a different kind of license. They yes, they're yes. audited monthly to make sure that food sales are Right. Equal or greater to? Can you help me on that, Nick, to make sure I'm right? It, it wouldn't be from ATF. It'd be from the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, State right. of Florida. Yeah. It's it's a normal restaurant right. style yeah. license. Right. To sell beer yeah. and, wine. and it's for wine and right. Thank you, Mayor. If I may, it's, yes, it's, go yeah. ahead, Commissioner Russell. It's the Florida Alcohol Beverage and Tobacco 
is it's ABT is the organization that, that issues license and it's a two it would be a two COP which is the beer and wine consumption on premise license. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the public who'd like to comment on this first reading? Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll move on to item number 17. This is the approval of task order number five for the City of Lynn Haven half cent sales design bill contract to pave the C and D roads with action required. And the city manager will have um, some information for us on this. Um, is there um, a motion? Well, I'll go ahead and let him read first and then we'll talk about a motion. Go ahead. Explain. Explain. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, this would be task order number five with Phoenix Construction. It would be the design bill contract. Uh, if you look on the second page uh, of that part, you'll see all the roads that are remaining that we have quantified as being C and D roads, which are the worst roads in the city. Uh, you'll see the amount of money, uh, and you will also see that it, by the money we have left you, uh, from the half cent uh, sales tax, uh, you see we're $518,704.60 short. Uh, my my recommendation to y'all is I was withholding $600,000 uh, from the contractor to make sure we had the money to uh, put down water and sewer as they replace three, the state replaces Highway 390. Uh, after doing some careful uh, arithmetic and making sure that I could cover in the scope of work with the state revolving fund loans, I could cover that with that. So. Part of that over a million dollars, the 1.4, part of that 600,000 is gonna be going to that. We already had some money still left, we'll fund it. So what I'm asking you to do today is, uh, this task order also includes Colorado roundabout uh, for $169,000 to be, uh, be done, done in front of the uh, country club. Uh, the transportation impact fees will pay that $169,000 but with the 518,000, I have collected, a, amassed a little over $2 million from the proceeds from the half cent sales tax. I would recommend that instead of applying those to the debt, I would like to go ahead and, and apply that 518 to the C and D roads. And that way we can have all the worst roads in the city of Lynn Haven done with the help of the loan we took. And then I will take uh, the remainder of the money and start paying debt back and uh, and see where we go from there. So once we get this list done, it will be all C and D roads uh, with the help of the SRF, SRF fund from the state. We'll have water lines, sewer lines, some stormwater stuff, as well as pavement put back over these roads. And and my understanding, if, if all of you, you can look online at our, if you'll remember the paving map that the city had um, for everyone to peruse, that would be all of the C and D roads and it's well over 20, I think it's 23 miles of roads now that will have been completed um, in just a little under a year, which I think is a phenomenal accomplishment for the city. So, um, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Are there any questions from the board or concerns from the board about this item? Mayor, if I may. Sure, go ahead, Commissioner. I have a question. Um, the task orders, um, I just have, I have issue with how many task orders that appear after a job has been bid out. And I, I really would love for the commission to um, consider putting a cap on task orders because it seems to me, and I'm being putting this very simply, it seems like we go out for bids, and if we have three or four people who, or construction companies or whatever that would like to bid, they bid low, they get the job, and then they come back to us again and again and again for, with task orders asking for more money. So, and I'm not speaking of this job, but um, we've had some jobs that they bid at 400,000, and before you know it, we've spent two or three million I, and I, or, you know, I'm just being, those are not, <laughs> those are not exact numbers. But I'd just like the board to entertain putting a cap on it, whether it's 10% over your bid or something, something to control this because I, I, I mean, I just think it can get out of hand. But I just wanted to voice that opinion. 
Mayor, Mayor, if I may. Mayor, if I may. Sure, yeah. um, and, and right. I, I would ask that as you answer the question that you would clarify between a, tax, a task order yeah. and a change order because yeah. I think there may yeah. be some confusion and this is not a change order, this is a task order. That's okay. correct. Uh, we, have, we identified all these roads and basically what we have done with the task orders is breaking this job up to multiple, mm -hmm. multiple jobs. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, you don't want to go out and put, like you said, all, all the money out there and then they bid, say, a million dollars and they come back and say, well, I need five million dollars. So we're trying to do as much as all our engineering and our people in the field can handle. So we bunch certain areas together that make sense. And if you remember the maps in different phases, mm -hmm. so that's why we bring in different task orders is saying, all right, we're ready for this section to be done okay. now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And you're right, Mira. I, I'm talking about change orders. Yeah. Which would yeah. be when more they money on the same they job. Keep coming back and back. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, any other discussion or questions from the board? Are there any questions or is there any discussion from the public on this item? Okay. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? I did a motion. Did I do a motion? I yes. Did. Yes. yes. Okay. You did. okay. Thank you very right. much. Well, thank okay, go you. Ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the task order number five uh, stands approved. And then moving to item number 18, um, the approval of the addendum to the 17th Street Ditch Financing Agreement to include the first scope of work involving city stormwater improvements from the city's stormwater master plan. There will be action required on this and city manager has a brief explanation for the board and the public. Yes, y'all bear with me on this one in several parts. Okay. Uh, if you recall, the 17th Street Ditch was a, was a project that we ha have done a design bill with Phoenix Construction and where also Phoenix Construction provided financing for this project. The original uh, contract was for $3.72 uh, million, in which we are paying debt on currently today. Uh, that was a 30-year loan for 2.55% interest. So we're paying roughly about $14,795 per payment uh, per month to, for that loan. Uh, Y'all done a change order on 4-12-2007, which is change order number three, uh, which 17 yes ma'am I'm sorry 17 which was to also do another section of the ditch that we had to do which is on the other side of highway 77 and then DOT is going to do a $750,000 component mm -hmm. of that ditch as well mm -hmm. so and that's from former city manager Joel trading out some land and, and getting that done for us so our part of task order three is $668,305. We have not started that project, so we're not paying anything right now. It's been awarded, but you know it's going to go in conjunction with the construction on Highway 390. Um, we, as you know, stormwater was a topic, like Commissioner Russell mentioned, and several has mentioned quite a bit. Uh, we have a lot of stormwater problems in the city of Lynn Haven. And one of the first places when I first become city manager was behind us here, Mississippi, Colorado, that whole big area there, Texas, it's, it's, a, it's a vast, vast uh, problem in that area. So uh, I had tasked when we, when y'all uh, recommended that we go ahead with the engineering study to do a stormwater study for the city of Lynn Haven, I asked them to start right there. So all the engineering, all, all the models, everything has been done for that area. Uh, I have been wanting to try to alleviate a lot of issues. We've had Miss, the Mississippi roads been blown out before. Uh, just this week I had several property owners uh, email and text me pictures of their yard with, you know, six, eight inches. You pretty much see kids' toys floating in the backyards. Uh, there's been several houses flooded in that area. Uh, I think, I think as, a, as a way of starting our stormwater uh, study and 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 some good faith for a lot of the uh, citizens in that area there's something that we really need to look at uh, in order to fix that area you are looking at seven hundred ninety thousand dollars and seven hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty dollars um, I have spoken with uh, Mr. Finch about the possibility of trying to roll this into uh, the 17th Street ditch 
Uh, I have also met with their attorney and considering this is an opportunity of loss of property to private and also public uh, uh, property, we do not have to bid it out according to statute. Uh, so what this would be would be an amendment to that contract. Uh, right now, what would happen if, if we added that added out figure to our contract with the 668,000, you pay $14,795 a month for that payment it would go to, with the task order three in which you've already approved, it'll go to $16,922. And if you, if you approve this task order 790 to fix that stormwater for those citizens and our roads area, it'll go to $20,065. So you're looking at a increase of $3,143 in a payment per month. Uh, that of course is a is a 30-year uh, loan at a rate of 2.55. I also have reached out to Hancock Bank, trying to figure out what interest rates are now on a project of this nature. They range from six and a quarter percent to six and a half. So I did some amortization schedules earlier today. Uh, we would pay if with the 2.55 percent, we'd pay $341,000 in interest if we went with Phoenix. Uh, Mr. Finch's uh, offer, or if we did uh, our own and try to get it just at six and a quarter percent, you're looking at paying interest back of 961,000. So you'd pay approximately $619,968 more in interest if you went the conventional way. Um, if you wanted to start on a, the stormwater, I would highly recommend to looking at this. <clears throat> just have a couple comments to add to that. Go um, ahead, Nick. I met with Mr. Jackson yesterday. The, the, the main thing that I took away from that that's slightly different, he's comfortable that you can improve this, this purchase. There's an exemption basically under the bidding statute. It's not called an emergency exception, but that's the general idea. If, if you've got property at risk, you've got an imminent need, um, and it's caused by something like flood or natural disaster, you, you can do that. His preference, though, when it comes back to Ms. Tender's comments, is rather than adding it to your existing contract, because it's not something that was really contemplated in that contract when it was bid out, just do a new standalone contract for it, which will be very similar to that 17th Street contract. We'll prepare that and get it done over the next couple of days, but um, you could make that uh, approval tonight, and we would just get it done after the fact. Um, but as part of that approval, some deliberation on the, the um, flooding and risk to property, finding that those circumstances exist and justify doing this project without bidding is, is something you should include with your, your deliberation and your motion. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Mayor, I, I have a question. For, Go ahead, for please, <clears throat> Commissioner <clears throat> Friend. City, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. First, uh, City Attorney. Uh, separate contract for the work or separate contract for the financing? Both. Okay. Mayor? So, yes, go ahead, Commissioner Russell. A separate contract for the financing is going to change your payment schedule because you're going to have a separate principal and interest. Right? Yeah, yes, I've, I've spoken with Mr. Finch. He has agreed to roll back the loan to 30 years. So um, it'll be effectively. When we, we're going to have to do it anyway with task order three. So when we roll back task order three, I'm going to roll it back to 30 year uh, payout term. And this would follow the same suit. We continue paying payments on that. It'll pay down the principal. And of course, most of it's going to be interest anyway, because it's a new loan. Uh, and then we would start 30 years with a new note. So what you're telling us now uh, is a little different than the conversation with um, Mr. Jackson, and um, did he did he advise that it could not be done just to roll it together, or, or what? I'm, no, he, I'm he totally advised right. that you could approve the work, but to okay. just do it as a, a new separate contract. Uh, and I also talked to Rob as well. He mentioned that, and he said, and you could amend the current contract as well. Okay. Okay. Is there any other discussion from the board? Recommendations. Okay. Yeah, I would just go ahead and make another comment. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Friend. Thank you, Mayor. Um, oh, this, is, this is a tough one for me. Um, you, you know, I know I'd made a statement a while back, you know, I'd like the city not to take on any additional debt. That being said, I recognize cheap money when I see it. Um, and, and this is an amazing rate. That's why we did it a long time ago. It was a great answer for a long, long standing 
issue on 17th Street. Um, and I see this kind of as the same way. This gives us the opportunity to get started on that stormwater. Um, so I'm just, it's a tough one for me because I don't want to take on the additional $790,000 worth of debt, but I just don't think we can pass up this particular offer at 2.55%. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any, yes, go ahead, Commissioner Barnes. I'd like to make a motion, please. Go ahead, please. I move that we approve this based upon the city attorney's recommendation to make it a separate contract. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I'd second. second that motion. So there's been a motion and a second. Was everything included in the motion that was needed to be there? I would just suggest that you add to the motion that the, the, the reason why you're approving it without going through the normal bidding process is the um, flooding that's occurring and the risk to property. And I'll amend my motion to read. To reflect the to statements reflect of the attorney, statement. okay, yes. and the I'll second, I'll Commissioner admit, Russell. I'll amend okay. the second. Is there any further discussion from the board? Is there any discussion from the public or questions from the public about this matter? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. I didn't plan to speak tonight. If you'd pull the microphone, that okay. helps people at I'd, home hear you I as didn't well. plan to speak tonight, but I live on Colorado, Colorado and um, we, we moved there July of 16, and um, it was going to be our retirement home, and we were there one year, and in July, um, not just a little bit of water, but a 150-foot deep river come from the front of our house all the way to the very back, and it was just a swift, flow all the way and it was about four or five inches deep and we had just installed hardwood floors and had done a lot of work in the house and I have been apprehensive about staying here and I just want to say thank you for approving this because now I can make this my forever home and my my a community that I can grow old in, and I thank you all. Thank you for speaking, ma'am. It's, it's time that that neighborhood be fixed, and we're, we're happy to hopefully be a part of that. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, sir, please come on up. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Jonathan Davis, 1401 Main Avenue. Um, just having a familiar, familiar out of our familiar um, with the stormwater systems um, is there any concern that this might be a sunk cost in that I don't see much maintenance happening with our stormwater systems and that if you don't properly maintain a stormwater system then we end up spending these we have these large bills to pay um, just throwing a large project at something especially that affects people who don't have flood insurance um, has there been consideration that roads could be delayed in order to help um, offset some of this cost? Because we can deal with a road problem, but you know we're in hurricane season, and for those who are not very aware with insurance, um, hurricane insurance doesn't cover flood. You know, and there's a lot of people who can't afford flood insurance, and I see it as the city's responsibility to maintain those systems for us. So, I mean, if we could have um, some maintenance plans made available or how you guys uh, manage our stormwater systems in lieu of large projects like this so that we can make a proper asset decision, um, that would be gr grateful for me. I think that's a very genuine concern and, and I don't know how many of the meetings you've, you've kind of taken part or listened to, but the stormwater plan that has been uh, paid for and put into effect right now includes not only the construction but the maintenance of and and how we're going to you know make it a citywide plan and there's never been one before and uh, I think it's a great concern of this commission and and of our city employees of our um, consultants um, to all um, I'll, I'll let you come to it <laughs> but um, I, I think it is a, a great concern for, for everyone and 
the thing about it is with replacing some of the infrastructure that we're having to do, the roads have to be ripped up to do some of that, to get underneath. And so once you do that, we've already got the paving plan in place too. So there is a plan. There's been a lot of thought put to it. Um, this is a plan. Um, there, as you've probably heard many times, there are 1927 clay pipes that were leaking all over the city that are being replaced as quickly as possible. So this isn't going to be fixed overnight, but I assure you that everybody on this board and everybody that is part of the city city team right now is working as hard as possible to make our city safe and a place where we can live and not live in fear of flooding. That's our, that's our goal. Um, and just something to, to be aware of is that if you travel around and look at our stormwater system, if you can't see the bottom of the pipe, then ma our maintenance has not been happening. If you see vegetation in our stormwater ditches, maintenance is not happening. So I challenge you all to, to, to drive through our city especially on the I do it every day and every day vegetation. and stay on the phone yeah. <laughs> so maintenance is is the problem that I, I see so if we don't address maintenance we get stuck with this large bill so that's thank you sir point. we appreciate you and, and I can agree with that I, I'd add a couple of things the stormwater study that the mayor is alluding to should be finished by the end of the year and like she said it covers citywide as far as the maintenance and all it goes back to what Commissioner Russell said uh, as far as the money. A lot of things can be fixed, maintained, but it does take the money in that area to do it uh, because with this budget, we're transferring over $900,000 from water to the uh, stormwater to cover expense. But another thing has been the rain. Uh, here lately, I know a lot of people have called my office. All these commissioners get called regularly, uh, and then they call me as well again. Uh, but uh, we are we are trying our best right now. Yeah, we appreciate your attention. To yes, sir. It. Thank you. Sir. Thank you Any other comments from the public? There appear to be none. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes. Aye. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. Tender. Yes. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes And so the addendum uh, would be approved uh, moving to item number 19 We have just two items left. It's been a long meeting. So we're almost there Item number 19 is the discussion on the direction of the property located on 801 Florida Avenue, which if you've lived here a long time, you would call the old post office building, which has been the tag office for a while. And now they've moved across the street to the Sun Bank facility. And so now we have a vacant building. So city manager, do you have some comments you'd like to lead this discussion? Yes, I, I'd like to open up to you, you all to uh, instruct me what you'd like to do uh, as far as my opinion. Uh, I do not want to be in the rental business uh, if I can help it. I'd much rather a nice business be in that building uh, where they can pay taxes just like everybody in this room as well as, as bring more to the city, hopefully. Uh, we, have, we have been contacted by several businesses about the possible sale of that building uh, as well as I've already, I've already committed and done a uh, property appraisal on that property so I do know what it's worth. Uh, so uh, I'd just like to hear from y'all if y'all want me to put it up for sale, how you would like to do that. Would you want me to rent it, lease it? I'm open. I personally would like to see you put it up for sale, and I would also like you to have caveats in that sale that would say that it should reflect the general spirit of the neighborhood, that it should have to look like part of the historic street that we're trying to, to build, and that it should be compatible with the mixed use of that street. It's residential, it's business, it's a kind of a restaurant boutique area is what we're looking at. So those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, let's let's sell it, but um, and that's a legitimate concern for me as well. But don't we do we have ordinances in place already for Florida Avenue to make the aesthetics all look the same? Because that was the question I had to city manager. So I don't know if we have concrete. Uh, yes, there is certain ordinance in that area. Okay. Because we don't want a parking lot. We don't want. No, okay. no. And, and I was wanting to dig further in those. I have not. Okay. But I, I will, you know, if you we probably have some time. So yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you. I remember there being some about the setbacks. For example, there's some of the residential areas that were allowed to have grass up to the sidewalk. Or if you know, there's a house there beside the coffee shop and that kind of thing. But and then but I don't think it's spelled out quite as detailed as we might like it. Yes. Other comments? Yes, Mayor. Um, what have you, you said you've had the property appraised. What is the value of the property? 
You want me to tell that? He does. I don't want you to tell the value because then <laughs> people will go lower than that. Don't tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and not only that, we don't want to go by property appraiser <laughs> anyway. We want to get a. We want to get a. We want to get it appraised. We don't want to go by property appraiser's no, assessment. I, I anyway, have gotten really. it appraised. Oh, oh you've gotten it appraised. appraised. That's different. Yeah, we don't want to share that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant that in a joking spirit. I didn't mean that to sound like no, no, no. I mean, obviously, if we're going to sell it, we have to put it on the market. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other discussion from the board? Um, Mayor, you know, um, I think y'all are aware that I, I'm, I'm completely against the city being in, in competition with any business. So the thought of us being a landlord is, is completely out of, out of my picture. Um, but I would ask the city manager, uh, I'm assuming that if we're, we're gonna make a motion and sell this, you've got a ballpark range on what you think we should ask for the buyers. Ask for the property. Yes, sir. You, you want to give us the suggested retail price that we're going to ask for? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, it's going to I be respectfully public. think that's a terrible idea. Really? Okay. As, well, as a I, former real estate agent, I think that's a terrible idea. But, but it will become public. Well, but, I mean, it will like become public. Ask. Yeah, I, and we're, I, I and we're going to have to suggest selling. Okay. Well, then, then I'll the, make a motion that that, that uh, we direct the city manager to sell the property to fair market value. Yeah, just to put it up for sale. Yeah. Yeah, second. A fair market and, and I would just suggest that you ask him after item twenty one. And and for the and for the re and for the record, it still has to come back to the commission to be sold. Yes. So ultimately, we'll we'll know the sale price and approve it. So I have that's my motion. Second. And and if I may just just for a moment just sort of clarify why I was so against saying it um, I was I was not happy about as many people were not the sale of the last piece of property it was only on the market for a couple of weeks and I don't think we got what we could have gotten for it so that's what I've been telling city manager I wanted us to get the highest value I don't want us to rob anyone but I want us to get the highest value that we can get for it so that's my thought I Are have th one suggestion go ahead may be a good compromise between the mayor's concerns and then just the motion of, of going ahead and getting it sold so if there's some standards in place, what you'll run into frequently is while there's standards on the books, if a new business comes in and doesn't do much to the building, they may not come up to compliance with those standards. You may want to condition the purchase on that owner coming up to full compliance with the existing standards. That'll get you something without having to create, recreate the wheel now. I would be willing to amend my motion to that. Or would we, or Nick, would we handle that when we, when he actually brings an offer before us? Yeah, it would just be a condition of the sale. Yeah, so we could do, okay. yeah. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second, and is there any further discussion from the board? Is there any input or questions from the public on this item? There appear to be none. Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Russell? Yes. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So stands approved for you to go forward with placing it up for sale. Thank you. Um, item number 20 is our last item this evening, the discussion of recommendations uh, for the Lynn Haven Senior Citizen Center. And you've already heard uh, Commissioner Tender earlier in the meeting today read the letter that we received from um, <coughs> the Bay Council on Aging. Uh, Mr. White, did you have any comments you'd like to make? Uh, yes, I, I, I needed uh, approval from you tonight. Um, the Senior Citizen Center will be coming under um, my control as far as the city manager's office and uh, I will need an employee to start there prior to October 1st which I mentioned in the budget earlier that I have an employee in there but I will need to hire them this month so uh, with that I think uh, I have a, a pretty good plan and I'll be working with the seniors down there to create some committees uh, look at a 501c3 and, and several other things to get the job done. But my concern tonight is to make sure that you approve the employee I need to run this facility with me. Is there a motion um, to approve an, employees, an, an employee for the Lynn Haven Senior Citizen Center so that Mr. White may go forward with his plans? So moved. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or discussion or recommendations that the board would like to talk about at this time? Yes, Mayor. Please go ahead. Um, uh, being in the food business, I just, I am concerned that one employee is not gonna be enough to serve 50 or 60 people every day. Uh, that concerns me with the health regulations 
and things of that nature. So I think uh, if we're taking this, um, taking this under our wing, I think we should be open to more than one employee. They have two there now, and they are running to get everything done. I also have other employees already lined up, but they are under a state grant, and one of the ladies has a master's in social work. Uh, she will be working there five days a week uh, from 10 to 2. She will not cost the city of Lynn Haven any money. She's paid through a state grant uh, for, for the next couple years. Uh, we also look at adding some more there. I also will be supplementing uh, with my staff uh, as well as other departmental staff to help out down there. Okay, thank you. Okay, and, and there's also um, already been a discussion of many people, I believe, who are volunteering already to, to help as volunteers. So that's a, a great thing as well. Anyone else on the board have a comment? Anyone from the public have a comment on the Senior Citizen Center or questions about this? Okay, Mr. White, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Russell? Yes. Mr. Tender? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes, and so it stands approved, and so go forward, and I think we're going to have a very successful um, Senior Citizen Center. I'm very excited about it. And at this point, um, thank you all for attending. I think it's been a very productive meeting, and the meeting stands adjourned. <laughs>